morning stones go ahead and stand up so that we can start worship father we just worship you this morning we adore you father god we lift your name on high lord god because you are the most high god possessor of heaven and earth and our deliverer from every enemy father we just i just feel like long time prayers that people are have prayed are about to break through in this season that long things that you've been praying for for so long are about to break through because we serve the god of breakthrough father we thank you for breakthrough this morning we thank you for relationships coming back together this morning we thank you for uh silly spirits breaking off of people we redeem our children this morning father god we thank you that no weapon formed against our finances our family and our future will prosper against us father god we thank you for your anointing and your power being resident with us this morning father god and that it would carry us throughout this whole week lord god put your favor on us father god for the lost father god that you would breathe through us what they need to become part of the kingdom and we thank you and we praise you for that in jesus mighty name amen so are you ready to praise god are you ready to praise god let's go let's get it up here we go I praise him when I'm strong. Praise him when I'm doubting. Yeah. I praise him when I'm numbered. Praise him when it's around me. Cause praise is a water. Yeah. My enemies drown me. Come on, let's sing that together. Yeah. As long as I'm free, here we go. Oh, I'm praising cause I know you're still in control. 
Yes, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So how can I keep it inside? I won't be quiet. My God is alive. I dare not keep it inside. I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. wherever you are he's worthy of all praise his name is Jesus there's nobody like him he's worthy of all praise come on praise him one more time don't stop child of God don't stop Woo. hallelujah
lift your hands. You took the time to come out. You got up, you got dressed, you drove here. You tuned in, you took the time to be here. Now connect with the Father. Come on, connect with him. He's right where you are. The song just said you are not alone. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Father, for everything that's broken in our lives, we declare today that it is fixed. For everything that is messed up in our lives, we declare today that it is cleaned up. For everything that is missing in our lives today, we declare that it is restored. And for everything that the devil has stolen, we declare that it will be restored sevenfold. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing out of place. If you agree with that, come on and give the Lord a hand clap, a shout, and a praise. Hallelujah. Go ahead and have your seats. Thank you, praise and worship team. That was so powerful. And thank you to each of you who are tuning in today. God bless you. We really appreciate you. Would you do us a favor? As soon as you have an opportunity, please hit the share button. Also take a moment to tag a friend or two so they can be connected to what God is doing and what God is going to do. Well, welcome to Stones Church, everybody, where we connect people to God, people to people in heaven to earth. And we want everyone to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Well, let's take communion. For those of you that are viewing at home, we'll give you an opportunity to get your communion elements together. Go ahead and grab a piece of bread or a piece of cracker to represent the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grab some juice to represent the cup. If you don't have juice, don't sit on the sideline. Just grab some water. If you're at either of our in-person locations and you need communion elements, please raise your hand at this time. One of our ushers will make sure you have them. Hallelujah. Ushers right here. Someone raise their hand right over here, ushers. We're going to put some skates on you today, ushers, and have you skating all over the house. Hallelujah. When Jesus served his disciples communion, one of the things that he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. This is my body, which is broken for you, is the way he actually said it. I don't believe that God would have included Jesus' body if there wasn't a benefit to our bodies. I said, I don't believe God would have included Jesus' body in the equation if there wasn't a benefit to our bodies. 1 Peter 2 and 24 says, He him own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. So he took our sins and the things that come from the root of sin, like sickness and disease, and he put it on his body and he nailed it to the cross. He said, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins would live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. So you are healed. You are healed. You might say, well, why do I still feel sick? Well, your body is just needs to catch up with the reality of the fact that you're healed. Well, if you are healed, you, you might say, how could I get sick in the first place? Well, when Adam sinned, if you will allow, the earth changed. And the earth became a bit sick, if you will. And then we also have opposition. The enemy, the devil, is trying to oppose what God has done for you. And that's one of the reasons why we're taking communion today. This is warfare. So we're fighting for what's ours. Go ahead and eat of the bread, which represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ, and declare that you are healed. And as we take this bread in, we drive out sickness. Sickness, we speak to you specifically. The spirit of infirmity, we speak to you. And we drive you out of our bodies. We drive you out of our lives. We drive you out of our experience. You must go now in the authority of Jesus. Hallelujah. After supper, Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, this do it as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and partake of the cup and remember Jesus. When he was being tortured, when he was being crucified, blood spilled out of his body. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or payment for sins. Your sins have been paid for. 
by Jesus. So there is therefore now no condemnation to you who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So you are free. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you that we war with this communion. We fight for everything that's ours and the authority of Jesus. It is so. Hallelujah. As you're disposing of your communion elements, we want to make sure that you are up to speed on everything that's happening here at Stones Church. So would you guys go ahead and roll the Stay Connected video for us? Hi, everybody. I'm Pastor Perry Lee Harris, and this is Stay Connected. Welcome to Stones Church, where we are here to transform lives by the power of God's Word. We exist to make a difference. For those of you who join us online by watch party, you can go to stoneschurch.com and click on the connection group link on your mobile Stones Church app and choose your place to connect. Stones Growth Track. For those of you that are attending and would like to meet in person, you will meet immediately following service in room 406. For those that are joining us online or one of our watch parties, you can join us via Zoom for our Super Saturday every third Saturday and start your journey with us online at stoneschurch.com by clicking Growth Track. Start the weekend off right with a mouth-watering men's breakfast at the Crew Family Bakery Restaurant and a special word from Pastor Joe Brooks Jr. Treat yourself and your dad or a son to a delightful morning on Saturday, June 17th at 8.30 a.m. You must register to attend the men's breakfast. Please register after service online. We are excited to announce our Stones Church New Genesis Community Fair June 10th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will have food, fun, and resources for all ages. Come out and enjoy. For information about our summer connection groups and more, go to stoneschurch.com. Also, New Genesis Summer Camp is happening again. This year's camp is open to students in grades K through 8. Camp hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Breakfast and lunch will be provided. There is a one-time registration fee of $25 for each family. DHS payments are accepted. Scholarships are available for eligible families. To register, please contact Anquinette Wilborn at 269-343-7023 or via email at awilborn at newgenesisinc.org. Stones Church Picnic will be held July 22nd at Camp Metatula. This year, we will be celebrating our awesome volunteers at the picnic. Please be sure to register to attend the picnic. There will be fun activities for the entire family. Water games for kids, basketball, and tug of war, just to name a few. Baptism will also take place on the beautiful Lake Barlow. Stones will supply hot, real meat and cool drinks. Registration for the picnic begins today, May 28th, in the lobby and online. I'll see you at the picnic. Remember to join us every Sunday in the Kalamazoo Auditorium for live prayer at 9.30 a.m. And now you have everything you need to stay connected. See you next time. Thanks, Pastor Perry Lee. Come on, put your hands together if you're excited. Woo! A lot of good stuff happening here. Hey, do we have anyone visiting with us for the first time? If so, would you please raise your hand? Can we get the house lights? You won't have to say anything. We just want to acknowledge you and celebrate you. If you're with us for the first time, see hands right over here, over here. Come on, uh, let's put our hands together and make them feel welcome. Would you keep your hands up if you're a first-time guest? Keep your hands up. Come on, you guys, we can celebrate them better than that. 
Our day just got better because of you. Would you keep your hands up because one of our members has a connection card for you. Another hand over here. And if you would fill out that connection card and then at the end of service, at the end of service, please bring your completed connection card to the guest house. You can find the guest house by exiting out of the main doors and making an immediate left and you will see the guest house. In exchange for your completed connection card, we have a wonderful gift for you and of course a very warm welcome. If you're visiting online and it's your first time, would you let us know by typing first time guest in the chat? Just three words, first time guest. And it doesn't matter what platform you're viewing on because we have ambassadors on every platform. And when you type first time guest in the chat, one of our ambassadors is going to send you a link that's a di digital connection card. And when you fill that out, we are going to mail you a wonderful gift. One more time, give God praise for all of our first time guests. Hey, I want to celebrate our watch parties in Grand Rapids, Michigan and Gainesville, Virginia. Would you help me give God praise for them? Hallelujah. If you want to know more about our watch parties, you can go to stoneschurch.com and click the watch parties link. And you can even sign up for a watch party right there. I also want to reiterate the fact that we have children's ministry every Sunday morning in person for grades 1st through 6th at both our Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids campuses. And if you have a child that's watching online, they can attend via Zoom at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can find more information on that in the chat. There's probably even a link in the chat. We also have youth ministry for grades 7th through 12th every Sunday afternoon at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom. You can find information on that in the chat as well. Well, it is time to give. Come on and rejoice. If you need an offering envelope, you should be able to find one in the seat back pocket in front of you. I know most of us or many of us give digitally, but if you have a check, you're going to make your check payable to Stones Church. You're going to place it in an envelope. If you have cash, you'll place it in an envelope as well. Or if you can't find an envelope in the seat back pocket in front of you, just raise your hand and one of our ushers will serve you. Our pattern is that we tithe, sow, save, and spend in that order. And in just a moment, we're going to do our tithing confession together. But before that, we have a video on all the ways to give. If you guys would go ahead and roll that clip. Giving at Stones Church is easy. You can place your giving envelope in a drop box in either the Kalamazoo or Grand Rapids Kentwood campuses. You can mail in your tithe, offering, or gift to Stones Church Finance Department to 1225 West Patterson Street, Kalamazoo, Michigan, 49007. You can download the Push Pay app for Androids in the Google Play Store and for iOS devices in the iTunes App Store. Or you can simply text Stones Church to 77977 to register and follow the prompt. You can go to stoneschurch.com and click on the give button at the top of your screen and follow the prompts. Download the Stones Church app and click on the give button in the bottom right hand corner and follow the prompts. Well, we know that many of you give digitally. And when you give digitally, it's easy to get on autopilot. So we've added a nice new feature to the service where we allow you to attach your faith to your tithes and offering by coming up and us doing the tithing confession together. Um, so why don't you do that at this time? Why don't you come on up? And we'll be doing our tithing confession together. And when we're done, those of you who have offering envelopes, we have buckets up front and you can uh, place your offering in those buckets when we're done. You guys look amazing. Isn't God good? Yeah, put your hands together. It's good to be alive, isn't it? You realize that tithing has a warfare element to it? In Malachi, the third chapter, the Bible says that when you tithe, one of God's responses to your tithe is he's going to enter, it's going to trigger his him to go into warfare on your behalf. The Bible says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So God says, when you tithe, he's going to run interference for you. 
He's going he's gonna to get involved and he's going to silence the devil from the stuff that he's trying to do in your life. So tithing has a warfare element to it. After we tithe, we give. When you give, you trigger a law. And a law is a force that when put in motion will produce a predetermined result every single time, no matter who employs it. Hallelujah. So when you give, you trigger receiving. When you sow, you trigger reaping. So you're going to put something in motion by what you do today. Hallelujah. After we tithe and then we sow, we save. We save. I believe saving is prophetic. I believe you're prophesying to your future to get ready for you. Hallelujah. You're, you're telling your future, I expect something when I get there. Hallelujah. So you, you, you send something into your future by saving. And then even when we spend, that's strategic. Hallelujah. We don't just throw away money. We, we spend strategically. When you spend, you help to uh, 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 strengthen the economy. You help to secure jobs. So it's all important. Amen. Let's go ahead and do our tithing confession together. Ready? Go. I thank you for the kingdom of God in which I stand. I once was lost without you and without hope in the world, but you sent Jesus to die for my sin. His blood has washed my sin away and his resurrection has broken the power of death over me. Now I stand before you saved, whole and born again without any sense of guilt or inferiority. You have brought me into the land of your promise that I might live by your word. And your word instructs me that when I come into this land to bring all the tithe into the storehouse, nourishment in your house, I have done so in obedience to your word. Now, according to your word, the windows of heaven are open and are pouring out blessings that I have not room to receive. I worship you in this and declare that I have lifted up my hands to the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and the deliverer from all my enemies. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates, inheritances and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, found money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we're finishing up our offering, I just want to uh, highlight and acknowledge one of our worship leaders, Brother uh, Vincent Bones. Can you give God praise for Vincent and the gift he is to our house and to the body of Christ? Yeah, come on, let's, let's celebrate him. Vincent is a prolific songwriter, and he's... He's releasing songs over the airwaves. Those songs are shifting the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Today, he's officially releasing one of his songs called El Rohi. Yeah. And we have the privilege of seeing the official video first. Go ahead and roll that clip.
God. Hey, Vincent uh, and, and the whole band and uh, everybody who participated in that, we're just thankful to God for you. We thank you for, um, for sharing your gifts here, and um, uh, we want to be appreciative of you and, and honor the gift in you. So thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah, so you can, you can go to YouTube and search for He Sees. So He Sees, H-E-S-E-E-S, and let's uh, let's view it and share it and blow it up, huh? Let's get uh, let's get that thing out there. Yeah, praise God. So I feel like a tiny, tiny collaborator in this because uh, Vincent had been noodling around with that song and and I heard it and then it it inspired me to to teach a message on the God who sees on New Year's Eve. So if you're interested in that, we kind of go deep into nerd breaking down the Hebrew and stuff like that. Um, Deep nerd, I just heard somebody say. Deep nerd. Yeah, that's right. It's all right. It's all right. Pa- Pastor Brooks will be back next week. So, you know, just hang with the nerds. I mean, Paralee, she gets the super fly, like, whoa, wow, 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 you know, during her thing. And, and I'm deep nerd. So, you know, that's how it is. Guests, thank you for visiting with us. I am not. Pastor Joel A. Brooks Jr. I'm his shorter, younger, paler brother. But he'll be back next week. Don't worry. Pastor Brooks and Pastor Yvonne are a visiting family in North Carolina. Some uh, nephew or niece is graduating high school, so so we're just happy for them to be able to visit and travel safely and, and take a week off. I, you know, my... Uh, my folks are visiting here. My mom wore a yellow shirt. She would have blended in right in with the praise team. She's a lifelong French hornist, and, but we didn't have an arrangement for, for horn today. So, so she could have joined in. And uh, I also want to acknowledge my wife, Julie. 
And um, would you like to come up? You don't have to. She's coming up. All right, come on up, Julie. So Julie, well, let me just say it like this. Uh, Adam Smith wrote in The Wealth of Nations how division of labor was a key to prosperity, right? If, if I specialize in milling flour and, and uh, uh, Don specializes in being a butcher and somebody else makes shoes, we all get more prosperous by specializing, right? It's, I'm not going to be good at making shoes and raising beef and milling grain and stuff like that. Well, Julie and I have adopted a, an approach like that in our marriage, and I primarily sort of look outside the family. That I face, I direct myself outside. It's my job to make sure there's money and all that kind of stuff. And Julie's direction is more towards the family. And so I get to stand on stage, and she gets to balance the checkbook, do laundry, right? And all this stuff. And she's, a, she's an outdoors woman. She climbs rocks. She's, uh, she's, she's uh, yeah, see, she's got pipes. Sun's out, gun's out. And uh, but, so I just want you to know, if she happens to predecease me and you can't find me, it's because I'm at home with no power, no internet. You can't call me because I don't know how to pay the phone bill. I've got no food. Somebody come get a brother, okay? <laughs> I just love you and thank you for thank you, honey. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Let's pray and we'll dive right in. This message is called The Power of Being Alone. The Power of Being Alone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Pastor Brooks and Yvonne and Elijah, their whole family, God. We thank you for the gift that they are to us, to this house, to this community, God, to the world. We just pray blessings on them, God. We pray that they'll seek your will, hear your voice, and have the courage to do what they hear, that they'll have peace in their family, prosperity in their finances, and passion in their marriage. We thank you for them, God. And Father, as we share and get into your word today, I pray that I will speak clarity, with clarity and that people will hear with conviction. <clears throat> We welcome you here. Holy Spirit, be the loudest voice in our heads. In the name of Jesus, amen. I expect this will be a visually rich message today. And um, rather than uh, 20 people asking me to email you the notes and stuff like that, uh, I've already put them up on a website. You can just go get them free. You don't have to sign up for anything. They're just there. And it's, uh, it's johnnolton.substack.com. The uh, video team, I think, has a slide for that. JohnNolton.substack.com. We're going to start in Matthew 3. Matthew 3.16. And we'll read to uh, chapter 4, verse 2. This is Jesus just beginning his public ministry. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. So I want to start with a question. Why? Why would God say, this is Jesus, my son. I'm really happy with him. I love him. Now go to the wilderness for 40 days and don't eat. How many of you have done that to your child? Hey, happy birthday. Uh, we'll see you in a month and a half. And at the end of this 40-day period of not eating, being in the desert, the devil's going to come and have a chat. Why? I'll tell you what I had thought for a long time. I thought, 
Well, I thought that the devil came at the end because that's when Jesus would be weakest. But I think I might have been wrong. So we'll come back to that. We're going to come back to Jesus. He's in the wilderness, okay? We'll come back. But let me ask you a question about yourself. And it's, it's simple. It's what is the most important sentence that you have ever heard? Now, it might take a while to, to stack order them, right, and figure out which was the most important, but there's, there might be some categories of important sentence, sentences that you've heard. Um, how about, like, uh, the one-word answer I got from Julie, will you marry me? Yes, that was an important word, one-word sentence that I heard from Julie. Or how about, congratulations, you've graduated. Or, you're going to have a baby. These are all important sentences you might have had. Or, you got the promotion. Or, we might have heard important sentences that were the opposite of those things. I want a divorce. You failed. Somebody you love, I'm sorry, they didn't make it. You're fired. Right? All of these, it could be positive, it could be negative, important sentences in your life, in my life. But I also want to think about the most important sentence that has ever been spoken in the history of the world. Man, it's hard enough to figure out the one in our lives that's that important, but which, what's the most important sentence in the history of the world? Well, I'm going to put a suggestion out there for you, and I believe that it was spoken by Jesus right after this experience that he had in the wilderness, and it's recorded in Matthew 4, 17, it's, it's in Mark 1, 15, and it's simply this, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I think this is a strong contender for the most important sentence ever spoken in the history of the world. The kingdom of God appears to be Jesus' main message. This is what he talked about. I'm just going to read four or five examples for you, just a sentence or two, just to just to orient you to my way of thinking that the most important sentence ever uttered in the history of the world is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in this gospel. Matthew 9, 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 10, 7. He told the, the disciples as he sent them out, he said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm making a case that the, that the most important sentence ever spoken was that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's available in a new way. Change how you think and believe it. Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Luke 9, 60, Jesus said to that man, let the dead bury their own dead. But you, you go and preach the kingdom of God. Luke 10, 8, I've got a couple more. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And here's the last one, Acts 1, 3. The apostles to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He started his public ministry talking about the kingdom of God and right before his ascension, so he, he had three years of public ministry, he died on the cross, he rose from the dead after three days, he hung out with the disciples for a few weeks and the, one of the very last things that he talked about with them was the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It was the start of his ministry, it was the middle of his ministry, and it was the end of his ministry. Jesus talking about the kingdom of God. So, 
Well, let me give you one more bit of evidence. We've got a slide on this one that the, um, I, I just did a little quick search on what words did Jesus use the most. Some of you have red letter Bibles and in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, whatever words that are uttered by Jesus are printed in red ink. And so I was kind of looking for the red ink, right? What, which words did Jesus talk about the most? Well, we know that he came to take away the sins of the world, and so maybe it's sin. Well, sin, Jesus talks about sin 38 times in the Gospels. He talks about love a lot, right? We know God is love, and, and love, Jesus talked about 78 times. He used the word kingdom 93 times, more than twice as much as sin. Sin wasn't Jesus' main message. Love was important. The kingdom of God. So, what is this thing? What is this kingdom of God that's so important to Jesus? Well, I'd like to start with humanity's basic desires and needs. I've got a slide for this. People need certain things to be fully functioning human beings. When we don't have these, we spend our lives searching for them. And the kingdom of God is perfectly designed to supply every single thing that we need. If you look up what, what are basic human desires, you'll get a list as long as your arm. But they fall into three categories. The first one is purpose. Let's go ahead and keep that slide up for a little bit. It's going to take people a minute to, to soak this up. The first one is purpose. We need to know why we're here. We need to know what we're supposed to be doing. You know, when, when we minister to people for, you know, people come up after service for prayer or you interact with people who, who need prayer. You know, there's, a, there's just a, a handful of categories of things that people are praying for and they want from God. And one of the main ones is they want to know what they should be doing. Should I take this job? Should I marry this person? Should I move to Albuquerque? You know, they, they want to know things. People have an intense desire to know what they should be doing. They want to know what's their purpose. You're welcome to take pictures of the slides. They're all available at that website, johnnolton.substack.com. You can download them and blow them up and, you know, make posters. Put them next to Michael Jordan and whoever else is on your wall. Purpose. Every human being has a core, deep desire to know why am I here and what am I supposed to be doing. The second category is humans need to be known. We will not live well in isolation. We need to be known and we need to belong. And then we need to have a hope for the future. You, you may have heard this term about deaths of despair, where people are dying in greater and greater numbers of alcoholism, drug abuse, suicide. These deaths of despair are because they don't have a realistic hope for the future. They cannot see that things will get better. They sense that my current condition is as good as it gets. People without a real hope for the future will not live. And so the kingdom of God is perfectly designed to deliver purpose, belonging, power, provision, and protection, which gives us hope for the future. The kingdom of God is a transmission system. It is the thing which delivers goodness that God generates in infinite abundance. God generates infinite abundance, and the kingdom of God is the transmission system. It delivers God's goodness into the earth where it needs to be used. God's, 
God's will. I think about, I think about on the, um, let's get that slide back up. On the left-hand side above purpose, God's will is what I think of as, as his general will for the world. It's basically revealed in the Bible. You can think of the Bible as a revelation of God's general will for people. And then God's guidance is the specific individualized direction that we all need to know our specific purpose. So you can discern humanity's purpose from reading Genesis 1 and 2. He put Adam in the garden to tend it and to keep it, right? We have a responsibility for stewardship over the creation. Okay, that's a general will, but it still doesn't tell Susie which job she should take, right? It doesn't, it doesn't tell Bob if he should, you know, live in, in Michigan or Florida. And that's where we need that guidance. So the will of God is his general will for humanity and then specific guidance. And those two things deliver on our need for purpose. We need to be known and to belong. And the kingdom of God delivers God's presence. Delivers God's presence. And when we can experience the presence of God, we belong. We find belonging. We find that we are known. I'm not going to go into this deeply today. And for hope for the future, if I'm looking only at the resources available to me as a finite person, it can be really easy to say, I can't change this. My relationships might be busted up. I might be addicted to people, attention, fame, drugs, sex, pornography, whatever we can get addicted to. And without some kind of power beyond myself, I am simply stuck here in this mess. But over and over, Jesus is demonstrating and then empowering people to deliver the power of God to make changes, to make the deaf person hear and the dead person rise and the lame person walk. And he delivers provision. He takes a little bit of food and he feeds thousands of people. He takes a little bit of water and makes 120 gallons of wine. And protection. I'm not at the mercy and the whim of the elements he stills the storms. He causes the, the man possessed or, or living with demons to be free. The power, provision, and protection of God is the third leg of what comes through that transmission system of delivering God's goodness from heaven into the earth where it needs to be used. The kingdom of God that Jesus spent so much time talking about and the reason that sentence, the kingdom of God is at hand, is so important is because he was announcing that access to God's guidance, God's presence, and God's power, protection, and provision was available in a way that it never had been before. Okay, I've been holding this thing that you might wonder what it is. I'll hold it still so that you can get a picture of it. This is a piece of Romex electrical cable. All of you have some of this in the walls of your house. These little wires here attached to the light switches and the plugs in your house. There's three pieces to it. This is, this is called two wire, although there are how many? Three wires, I know. This one, though, that doesn't have any insulation on it, that's a ground, and so they only talk about the conductors, they only count the conductors. But this is 14 gate, 14.2 Romex cable. So I've talked about the kingdom of God as the transmission system, delivering God's goodness from heaven where it's generated into the earth where it needs to be used. And so I like to think about 
a, an electrical system as a, as a way to understand this. We can put the next picture up called the kingdom of God uh, versus the world's kingdoms. So in the electrical system, there's generation, transmission, and distribution. Generation is at the power plants, you know, a nuclear plant or a coal plant or a natural gas plant, or now you're seeing wind turbines and a lot of these uh, solar. All of those are different means of generating electricity. So a power station over in South Haven generates something like two gigawatts. I don't know exactly how much it is, but it's a lot, okay? More than any of us could use or stand to be near, really. In fact, you can't get near the plant unless you have special authorization, and you can't go into certain places unless you have all kinds of protective equipment. It's, it's more power than anybody can stand. So there's power generation, and then there's transmission. And these are the, the big um, towers you see with the cables on them, and, and um, they, they transmit incredible amounts of power. If you touch one of those... You, you might just disappear. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of power going through those wires. Daryl Browning, who sings, sings with our praise team, is uh, in charge of the consumer's uh, energy electricity. He could tell us a lot more. But you get the idea. Generate a bunch of power, transmit it. And then they, it comes to these little transformers where it, it's sort of made usable. And then it can go through little wires like this into our houses and we can charge our iPod or iPhones and uh, iPods. <laughs> Welcome to 1999. <laughs> so the kingdom of God is that transmission system. I'm not going to teach on this today, but guess what's the distribution system? Yeah. We're the distribution system. Because we're the ones that know all these people who need to understand their purpose. They need to be known and to belong, and they need to have a hope for the future. But today we're talking about the kingdom of God, the transmission system. The kingdom of God, you see, isn't the only kingdom. There's lots of other kingdoms in the world. And I've uh, illustrated them. We'll get that picture back up. I've illustrated them with a, a little battery. <laughs> See, one and a half volt battery. So you can think about that. Some of these kingdoms have no power. You, you could plug into them, but they ain't nothing there. Some of them have, don't have much juice. They don't really give us what we need. There are, there's a kingdom of Satan. There's a kingdom of governments. Their different thought systems serve as kingdoms. They're weak. They don't give us what they need. These alternate kingdoms, these kingdoms of the world, they promise to give us what we want without having to do what God wants. See, remember Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Those are tied together. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. See, you don't get access to the kingdom without coming under the will of God. It would be dangerous to get access to that much power without being under the right kind of authority instruction and having the right value system. We don't want to create a bunch of Voldemorts out there. Or that. So these kingdoms of the world, they promise to give us what we want without having to do with do what God wants. So an example might be politics. Do we still have that slide up there? Uh, let, let's go back to the transmission slide with the three things. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm kind of messing with everybody here. But, but let, let's just take politics. We'll just work one example here. There we go. Um, and so a political candidate or a political 
party might promise you a better future, right? Uh, we're going to have free everything, and um, you'll get to do whatever you want, and everybody, there'll be a pot in every, a chicken in every pot, right? That was uh, Warren, Warren Harding or somebody back there said that, was a, a politician. Anyways, they paint this rosy picture of a future that's better. So they give us a hope for the future, how do you belong? You can be part of our tribe. You can join our party. And how do you know you're in? It's because you hate the other one. <laughs> and then what's your purpose? Your purpose is to get out and vote. You just have to do the will of the party. Okay? See, that's how a, an alternate kingdom besides the kingdom of God works. Does that really get to those basic human needs, though? Will it really satisfy? I think politics is a one-and-a-half-volt flashlight battery kingdom. I don't think there's much juice there. All right, so we can get rid of that slide. I just wanted to work one example for you. So there's lots of kingdoms out there, but... The most favorite kingdom besides the kingdom of God for, for people to connect to is the kingdom of me. I am on the throne of my life. <laughs> in this kingdom, in the kingdom of me, we say, my kingdom come, my will be done. It's all about But the kingdom of me has very, very limited resources. The kingdom of me only helps me belong to me. The kingdom of me for hope for the future relies on me. And for a sense of purpose, it's all about me. Since I'm not following God's will, I don't have access to the resources that will actually satisfy my basic needs for purpose to be known and to belong and to have a hope, a real hope for the future because the kingdom of me is extremely small and weak and scared. Vladimir Lossky wrote He wrote in Russian, so this is a translation. So if it's wrong, it's blame it on the translation, okay? Vladimir Lossky wrote, God designed us so that our spirit would live from God, that our soul would live from our spirit, our body would live from our soul, and we would minister to the world. But instead, we are alienated from God. So our spirit lives from our soul, our soul lives from our body, and our body lives from the earth, taking from it rather than ministering to it. Unless we are plugged into the infinite resources of God, we are in constant competition and struggle against other people for finite, limited resources. Let's see the slide about the wrong kingdom. See, when I am plugged in, I was going to say, here's how you can tell you're plugged into the wrong kingdom. But you know what? It's a lot more fun to talk about other people. When other people are plugged into the wrong kingdom, they're angry. They're ticked off. But it's not their fault. Because, you know, they wouldn't be mad if people didn't piss them off. You might have heard that before. I was on a bike ride last week. It happens a lot. But I was in a group, there was eight or ten of us, and we're, I'm the president of the Kalamazoo Bicycle Club. Yes, indeed. Uh, they never play Hail to the Chief, but... <laughs> I get all the complaints about bad bike riding in town. And so when you're on a bike ride with me, 
We're tight, man. We're following the rules. We're polite. We stop at the stop signs, right? Okay? So we're doing everything right. And I know because I read the laws and everything. We're, we're doing our deal. We're out in the country. We're riding our bikes. But a car didn't like us. It happens. As they came up behind us, they put the horn on. And they left it on as they went around us. And they left it on as they passed us. And they left it on as they came in front of us. And they left it on until their battery wore out or something. I don't know. They left it on a long time. So they were a little angry with us. And then one of the guys in my group is plugged into the wrong kingdom too. He gave him that Hawaiian peace sign. You know, the one that means you're number one, except that's not what it really means. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, two great examples of people being plugged into the wrong kingdom. Let's leap the slide up because, see, when I'm plugged into the wrong kingdom, people are either instruments to get what I want or their obstacles in my way. Since we're fighting over limited resources, I got to get mine, right? I got to push you out of the way or I got to get something out of you. Why is the most important sentence in the world that the kingdom of God is at hand? It's because it gets us out of the need for those wrong kingdoms, man. It gets us unplugged. It allows us to unplug from limited, finite resources where we treat people as obstacles or instruments to get our will. And it plugs us into the infinite kingdom of God, which is perfectly designed to deliver every single thing we need. If people are plugged into the wrong kingdom, they're angry, they're impatient. They will lie, manipulate, steal, do anything to get what they need because resources are scarce. They are discontent. They're never happy with nothing. They owe people money or favors because they're always shuffling around and they're trying to shuck a jive and they're trying to get stuff out of you. If I'm plugged into the wrong kingdom, I'm talking about me and my stuff. I'm never going to ask you questions because I don't care about you. I care about me. They'll be anxious or depressed because they don't see a genuine hope for the future. They might have affairs because, you know, one woman can't do it for me. Or they're always looking to get satisfied. They, they can't find belonging here. And so they think if they get the next one or the next one or the next one or the next one, I'll find it. They can't commit. They're jealous or they're envious. Jealousy is about who you're with and envious is about what you have. They might be jealous and envious. They might be genvious. <laughs> and this last one. I just met this guy named Josh Wymore. He wrote a book called Humbler Leadership. Let's, I've got a quote from him. Let's go ahead and look at that. He said, if we're plugged into the wrong kingdom, I see myself as the person amongst objects instead of a person amongst people. However, when I realize the role I play in the universe is small but important, I recognize the world neither revolves around me nor rests on my shoulders. Let's go back to Jesus in the desert. I promised you I would. Why did God send him into the wilderness? You're my son. I love you. I'm happy. Go to the wilderness. See, I had always thought that the devil waited 40 days until Jesus was weak enough. But this whole thing, this whole experience is orchestrated by God. It says, he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. I think we get a clue from the final temptation. The devil had three different temptations, and the devil offered Jesus 
all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, all those other sockets that he could have plugged into. And Jesus said, be gone, Satan. See, I no longer think that Satan came after 40 days when Jesus was weak. I now believe that Satan was kept away for 40 days until Jesus was strong enough. I think the 40 days allowed him to become strong enough to resist all the kingdoms of the world. He was intentionally and strategically cut off from all of the world's resources, from food, from people, from attention, from politics, from sex, from drugs, from wine, from money, and he had to rely entirely upon the kingdom of God. He spent 40 days totally unplugged from any alternate kingdoms and entirely plugged in to the kingdom of God. He learned God's will. He experienced God's presence and he gained access to God's resources. Do you remember when Jesus is at the well in Samaria and the woman comes up and, um, and he and they have a conversation and the disciples come back with some food and they say, hey, master, aren't you hungry? And he says, I have food that you don't know about. He had access to resources beyond what they knew at the time. So why did God send Jesus into the wilderness? Why did he unplug him from everything that the world might provide? He sent Jesus into the wilderness because he loved him. He wanted him to plug into the infinite supply of the kingdom of God and to disconnect from every weak and empty kingdom that cannot truly satisfy any of our basic human desires. So, stones, how do we follow the example of Jesus? How do we disconnect from these weak, ineffective kingdoms that all compete for our attention and plug into the kingdom of God? Well, there are spiritual exercises that we can do that allow us to be intentional and strategic about disconnecting and really plugging in. So I'll just go through some quickly and then we'll go into one in a bit of detail. Here's the first thing. If people, if I tend to see people as obstacles in my way, if I'm the guy or gal, given the Hawaiian peace sign because somebody went 10 miles an hour slower than I thought they should, if people are obstacles in my way, I need to celebrate. I need to celebrate their success. I'm starting to train myself not to compete, to celebrate. I need to serve people and to recognize their worth and elevate their importance in my own eyes. I need to be in fellowship and to learn what's important to other people, to get off my own throne and take that crown of me off of my head to be with other people. I need to confess when I make a mistake in order to learn reconciliation. These are exercises you can do to intentionally cut the cord. I need to pray for their safety. I need to pray for other people's security. I need to pray for them to be blessed if there are obstacles in my way. And then if I'm seeing people as instruments to get what I want, people from whom I can extract resources, there's some things I can do. One exercise would be to give to them extravagantly. Rather than taking from, just bless them. Yes. Yes. Don't give them a dollar tip. Don't give them a five dollar tip. Give them a hundred dollar tip. Devin's got us going to Waffle Houses whenever we're in, in their area. And we've developed a habit of 
giving people a hundred dollar bill. I'm not telling you this to make me look good. I'm trying to give you an idea on how to disconnect from trying to get something from people and give something to them. You're disconnecting from the wrong kingdom and plugging in to the kingdom of God. You know why people work at Waffle House? Because they need the money. If people are instruments to get me what I want, I need to practice secrecy and to hide my accomplishments, to minimize me because I'm, I'm making myself way too big. If people are instruments to me, then I need chastity. I need to abstain, to break free from, from the wrong addictions, to soul addictions. If people are instruments to get me what I want, I need to practice silence to train my mouth not to manipulate people. And if people are instruments to get me what I want, I need solitude to reconnect me to God's supply. We were camping this weekend and I took this picture of a, of a camper. Yeah, we'll put that up here. And uh, I think I zoomed in on it enough. And the front there in the black, maybe you can read the letters. This nice looking fifth wheel camper is called the solitude but we'll take the next picture and you can see uh, the name doesn't do the, doesn't doesn't make it so see it's it's packed in there with hundreds of other campers the solitude uh, with lots of lots of other ones around but I just want to commend to you the practice of solitude of being alone not because you hate people but because you need to be connected to God and his resources. You go solitude because you love people and you want to serve them right not because, and not extract resources from them. So let me just share with you a couple ideas on how to practice solitude. Let me first say this, start small, unless you need to start big. You decide. Let's start by creating a little bit of auditory space. When you get in your car, don't turn something on the radio or don't put on the podcast or don't put on music, not even worship music, not, just be quiet. How can God get a message to you if you're filling it with Kirk Franklin or uh, sports news or talk radio or whatever it is? Just try it. Oh my gosh, leave your phone at home. Okay, somebody just got a little sweaty. Your palms start tingling. You get a little jumpy. Where my phone at? That's a sign that it's got a grip. Leave your phone at home. Turn off your radio. Turn off the TV. Don't show me any videos. Take a commute in silence. Now you're starting to get a little solitude. Schedule two hours alone with God with no agenda. I mean, don't even pray. Just say, hey God, I just wanna be with you. Now, when you do that, if you're like me, a bunch of things are gonna come into your mind your to-do list. You know, I should order some new shoes. That was Jeff Bezos, not God. So you just write it down. Have a piece of paper. I have two pieces of paper or two lists. One is a uh, to-do list because I know that my to-do list is going to show up. And then my revelation list because I know if I press in, I'm going to get some revelation. So your to-do list will come up for a while. Oh, I should probably, did I, did I move the laundry to the dryer? You know what? You can wash it again later if you need to. Because this two hours is for me and God. And then you get quiet again. I should bake some cookies for somebody. Okay, write it on the to-do list. But after a while, the to-do list is done. 
And then you might hear something that you didn't expect. And I'll just tell you, God only talks to me about me. He never tells me what Julie should do. He never tells me what my kids should do. He never tells me what Pastor Stan should do. He always tells me what John should do. I put those things on the Revelation page. Here's another idea. Take a long walk by yourself. I take long bike rides. I did a six hour bike ride already this year. People are like, what do you listen to? The wind? God? I'm unplugging, disconnecting from the wrong kingdoms, from the need to be entertained from the need to have somebody's attention. Just me in the cornfields. Try some solitude. And then you could schedule, if you wanna go bigger, you could schedule a retreat day or two or three at a monastery. There's one in Three Rivers, Michigan. St. Gregory's. I don't care what you do in particular about those things. But I implore you to find a way to take the most important sentence that has ever been uttered in the history of the world. The kingdom of God is at hand. Change how you think and believe this good news. To take that sentence and find a way to lean into it. To intentionally disconnect from the wrong kingdoms that aren't really satisfying you and plug in to the kingdom of God. Would you stand up with me, please? Pastor Stan. Praise God. I, I want to I pray for you and then I'll, then I'll ask Pastor Stan to fix up whatever I messed up. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we've received this word about the kingdom of God and about Jesus being on retreat with you. Father, as you have spoken to us over the last 45 minutes about ourselves, about our lives, about our connection to the world and our connection to you. Wherever, Father, you have revealed a gap, wherever you've revealed that we're not fully engaged with the kingdom of God and your resources and your will, convict us now, God, to make a change to do something different, to no longer see people and treat people as obstacles in our way or objects from which we should extract something. Teach us, God, what to do in order to gain access to your will, to your presence, and your power, provision, and protection in the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, hallelujah. Hey, would you guys help me celebrate Pastor John and the gift that he is to the house? Hallelujah. Would you stand with me and just stick with me a couple more minutes. I wanna make a couple of appeals. Would you close your eyes, just stay in this moment. Father, we thank you for what you have spoken to us. We thank you for revealing to us the power of being alone. Now empower us, O oh God, to silence all this noise so we can hear your voice. I just want to make the first appeal, and that's to, to those who have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord. Pastor John just talked about the kingdom of God. If you just keep your eyes closed, just stay right here in this presence. He just talked about the kingdom of God. And in John, the third chapter, a Jewish rabbi came to Jesus and said, nobody can do the things that you're doing except God be with them. And Jesus's response to him was, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. 
In other words, Jesus was saying to them that there's a whole other kingdom, a whole other world that gives you access to destiny and purpose and power and provision that you can't even see. You can't even tap into it unless you're born again. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to be born again. You had the first birth, which is your natural birth, but the second birth is a spiritual birth where you allow God to come into your life. You allow Jesus to come into your heart and something supernatural happens to you and that's called being born again. It's the second birth. So if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord, I want you to pray this prayer after me. I'm gonna lead you into being born again. I want everyone to pray it with me. Say, Father, I thank you that you said in your word that if I would confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. I would be born again. My life would be transformed. I do so now. Jesus, come into my heart and become the Lord of my life. And I believe that God raised you from the dead and you're alive forevermore. Come on, everybody, rejoice. If you would just continue to keep your eyes closed, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and you're in either of our in-person locations, would you just raise your hand? with all boldness. Don't be afraid. Just put that hand up. I just got born again. I just received Jesus Christ. Go ahead and put your hand up. Those viewing online, the way you put your hand up is by typing three words in the chat. You type, I got saved. It's just three words. It's your way of saying, I'm putting my hand up. I just received Jesus Christ as my Lord. Hallelujah. I want to make the second appeal, the second appeal is for those of you who are walking with God, but something interrupted that relationship, but you're ready to come home, and today is the day you're ready to do it. I want everyone to repeat after me to take us through the process of coming back to God and say, Father, I thank you for this day in my destiny. This is the day that you decided in my destiny that I'm supposed to come back home. So, Father, I'm coming back to you. I'm running back to you. And I thank you that you received me with open arms. Hallelujah. With your eyes closed, if you just came back to God, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I just came back to God. Something interrupted my relationship with him, but I just came back. I see your hand. I see your hand. Those viewing online, if you just came back to God, I want you to type three words in the chat. And say, I came back. I came back. Now, Father, right now, for every person who got born again and for every person who said, I came back to you, Father, I declare right now that you release a new level of power in their life that has never been released before. The ability to resist every temptation, the ability to walk forward with clarity, with destiny, and with purpose. walking into a new world, a new dimension, a new walk with God, new power, new purpose, new understanding, new revelation, times with God, visitations. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, everybody rejoice. Hallelujah. You might be in... Uh, any of our in-person locations or you might be viewing online, you might want to join Stones Church. If you want to join Stones Church, I want to join Stones Church. You can do that a couple of ways. You can come up right now. You can come right over to my left or you can come up right after service. One of our ambassadors will be up, up front or you can go to the guest house after service and speak with one of our ambassadors in the guest house. The guest house in the Kalamazoo location can be found by exiting the main doors, making an immediate left. You look right to your left and you will see the guest house. 
I want to join Stones Church. Again, you can either come up right now, right over here. One of our ambassadors will give you next steps. Or you can come up after service, right to that area. Or you can go to the guest house. You may want to become a volunteer. I want to serve. I've been sitting still, but I want to serve. God is telling me to get moving. If you want to become a volunteer after service, would you meet us in the guest house? And Pastor Diana Crawford will be there. She will give you your next steps. Thank you guys for being so patient. Thank you guys for being so amazing. Hallelujah. Don't forget, if you're a first-time guest, please join us in the guest house after service again, exiting the main doors, making an immediate left. Look right to your left, and you'll see the guest house. If you have prayer requests, when we dismiss the service, you can begin to come up front. Those viewing online, you can begin to enter your prayer requests in the chat. And after the final song, we will pray for you online. You guys are amazing, and I thank God for you. Repeat after me. What? Me fail? No way. Because Satan is defeated. God is exalted. And all together, and God bless you.
the glory forever. Amen. We sing it. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. Oh yeah, we sing it. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Is the glory. 